there's something you need to know. Someone has betrayed me. Varys. He knows the truth about John. He does. Danny's an incredibly strong person. She's also someone who has had really close friendships and close advisors for her entire run of the show. You look at those people who have been closest to her for such a long time, and almost all of them have either turned on her or died, and she's very much alone. And that's a dangerous thing for someone who's got so much power to feel that isolated. So at the, at the very time when she needs guidance and those kind of close friendships and advice the most, uh, everyone's gone. I think that Varys knew that it was unlikely that he would survive the attempt to overthrow Danny in favor of John. And he also knew that ethically, in his mind, had no choice but to try to do that anyway. It was me. Goodbye, old friend. I think that Tyrion is saying goodbye to his best friend in the world outside of his brother. Tricaris. And the, uh, the amount of guilt that he feels over being the cause for his best friend's imminent death, it's hard to really get your head around. I don't have love here. I only have fear. You will always be my queen. Jon Snow is someone that she's fallen in love with, and as far as she's concerned, by this point, Jon has betrayed her by telling people about his true identity, and also the fact that he's unable to return her affections at this point. All right, then. Let it be fear. I think that when she says, let it be fear, she's resigning herself to the fact that she may have to get things done in a way that isn't pleasant, and she may have to get things done in a way that is horrible to lots of people. Mercy is our strength. Our mercy towards future generations. He will never again be held hostage by a tyrant. She chose violence. A Targaryen choosing violence is a pretty terrifying thing. Even when you look back to season one, when Khal Drogo gives the golden crown to Viserys and her reaction on watching her brother's head melted off. He was an old dragon. And he was a terrible brother, you know, so I don't think anyone out there was, was crying when Viserys died, but there is something kind of chilling about the way that Danny has responded to the death of her enemies. And if circumstances have been different, I don't think the side of Danny ever would have come out. If Cersei hadn't betrayed her, if Cersei hadn't executed Day, if John hadn't told her the truth, like if all these things had happened in any different way, then I don't think we'd be seeing this side of Daenerys Targaryen. I don't think she decided ahead of time that she was going to do what she did. And then she sees the Red Keep, which is to her, the home that her family built when they first came over to this country 300 years ago. <laughs> it's in that moment on, on the walls of King's Landing when she's looking at that symbol of everything that was taken from her when she makes the decision to, to make this personal. her to be just death from above as seen from the perspective of the people who are on the business end of that dragon. In most large stories like this, it seems like there's a tendency to focus on the heroic figures and, their, and not pay much attention to the people who, who may be suffering from the repercussions of the decisions made by those heroic people. And we, we really wanted to keep our perspective and our, our sympathies on the ground at this moment because those are the people who are, are really paying the price for the decisions that she's making. I think that John is also in a kind of denial. At first, the siege is a war. Soldiers killing soldiers, that's what war is. I think John is someone who's always been a very good soldier who has never enjoyed being a soldier. He's been trained as, as a fighter from the time he was a little boy. He's quite good at it, he's quite good at leading men into battle, and he also hates it. 
I think for him, it all starts out seeming like it's gonna work out, and then it turns into a nightmare. When she takes off and starts burning the city, the Unsullied on the ground and the Northmen on the ground take that as their cue that it's a moral free-for-all. The good guys are behaving like the bad guys, and the bad guys in this shot are the ones who are doing all of these horrific things around him who are his own men. The moral lines that he's drawn for himself in his own life you can't be maintained for everyone in all situations. Go home, go. It's a small scene, but it's also for us one of the most important scenes in the whole episode because it's the culmination of their, of their story together. And you'll be dead too if you don't get out of here. I'm going to kill her. The road to vengeance always ends in one place, which is what the Hound is saying to her here. I've made my choice a long time ago, and this can only end in one possible way for me. But for you, you have so many other options. Look at me! You want to be like me? The Hound has genuinely come to have affection for Arya. I think he loves her as much as he's capable of loving someone. And he knows that if she comes with him at this point, she's not going to make it out of there. Sandal. Thank you. Hello, big brother. We've always wanted to see these two face off again, and they finally did. It struck us that it would be kind of apocalyptically beautiful to see them fighting on the stairway to nowhere um, with the, the sky in the background and the dragon flying by and the flames everywhere. We knew that these two were going to die together um, at each other's hands, and we knew that the hound's death had to be a death by fire. So the one thing stronger in the hound than his fear of fire is his hatred of the person who put that fear there in the first place. It feels like you needed a perspective to carry you through this horror, like you need a Virgil to take you through the hell that Danny's building. The reason we decided to follow Arya out of King's Landing and to, to see the fall of King's Landing through her eyes is, is something that we talked about with an earlier episode. You just care a lot more when you're with a character that you care about. So if we saw a lot of extras running around on fire and buildings falling apart, it might have been visually interesting, but it wouldn't have had much of an emotional impact. But when you're there on the ground with Arya, who's one of the people we care the most about, then everything takes on that much more of an edge. We knew that the Hound would be convincing her to part ways with him and to not go to her death. And once she decides she needs to get out of the city, well, she's in, she's in the worst possible place you can be. So she's got to get from that central point all the way outside the walls of the city. It's the longest, hardest journey anybody has to make in the entire episode. You know, there's a scene several years ago where Jamie and Bronn are talking about how they want to go, and Jamie's talking about dying in the arms of the woman he loves, and this is it. I think he knows that they belong together, that they came into this world together, that they need to go out of this world together. <laughs> Once he goes through the various exits and they're all clogged up with rubble and there's no way out and he knows there's no way out, he's just trying to calm down the woman he loves because he knows this is it. Look at me! Just look at me! Nothing and else it matters. <laughs> Nothing else matters. Only us. I think Jamie, by the end of episode five, has come to terms with who he really is. And he may not be happy with who he really is, but he knows he's not. He knows what matters to him, and Cersei is what matters to him. 